Hi guys, it's Catherine. So I'm sure most of you are aware that this year marks the centenary of some women in the UK being granted the vote. And alongside this, there are lots of events happening in the book community to celebrate it. And February specifically is the 100 year anniversary of women over 30 in the UK being granted the vote. So I thought I would do a series of videos on my channel to commemorate and celebrate this. I thought I was being really unique when I came up with this idea, but I've already seen some other channels making similar content. So I'm sorry if there's some duplication, but let's just say that great minds think alike. Um, so I'm going to be making a few videos over the coming weeks and potentially later in the year um, about books written by women that I think are in some way inspiring. So I'm going to be doing one about um, non-fiction books that talk about feminism and what it's like to be a woman. And I'll also be, talk, be making a video about novels that I think have something to say about womanhood and feminism. Um, but in this video specifically, I'm going to be talking about some authors, some female authors that I really like who write historical fiction books. Firstly, by historical fiction, I'm going to be talking about books that are set in the 19th century or earlier, just because I read a lot more of those and I feel like there is quite a distinction between books set um, before the 19th century and ones that are sent set kind of after 1900-ish, um, but there are plenty of books and female authors that I really like that write um, books set in the 20th century, um, like Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie for example, and I will be making videos and talking about those separately, but just to clarify, I'll be talking about kind of books set slightly further in the past in this video. I love historical fiction because for me it analyses the historical, political and cultural events of the past but makes it personal and it's about how these events um, really shape the lives of individual people which for me is much more interesting to read about than the broader scope. And it so happens that almost all of my favourite historical fiction writers are women and it might be a coincidence but I do think a lot of women have a great deal of talent in writing in this genre and not all the protagonists in these books that I'll talk about are female um, because I mean, it's just a product of the hist historical period that they're writing in that um, I value the historical accuracy of these books and often women are not in huge positions of power within them. However, history has largely been written by men and therefore elides the huge contributions that women have made throughout history, not necessarily, you know, on the front line of battle or, um, you know, pioneering in science, although of course many women did, um, but sometimes forgets the roles that women did have, sometimes in the domestic sphere, um, or as workers. I think what these books do is they portray real women who were acting in a time period where they did not have the democratic ability to vote, but they managed to exercise their power in a myriad of other ways. And I've chosen all contemporary female writers to talk about in this video, um, because I feel like we ought to be nurturing this talent uh, and helping them in any way we can. Um, either by buying their books or borrowing from the library or writing reviews for them on Amazon or on your own blog. Um, just, yeah, any way that we can help make these voices more heard. So, right, let's get started. The first woman author that I'm going to talk about is Jessie Burton, who's the author of both The Miniaturist and The Muse. And the very first video I actually posted on this channel was a kind of comparison review of both of those. So I will link it above and in the description. So the miniaturist is set in Amsterdam in the 1680s and it follows a recently married woman called Petronella who has been gifted a doll's house by her husband and she begins to receive unsolicited miniature items um, from an unknown person uh, to fill this doll's house and it begins to have a kind of supernatural, slightly strange element um, when these figures begin to strangely reflect the events of her life and in particular her loveless marriage. Petronella is a really wonderful character, she's very headstrong and independent, um, but she's also deeply concerned by the expectations placed on her by society as a married woman. It has a lot to say about ostentation, about race, um, about sexuality and also artwork. It's a really rich novel, even though it's not massively long, um, it's just lovely to read. And I'd say the muse is as complex and detailed, but maybe not quite as exciting. This one's set in the 1930s and 60s, so I'm kind of breaking my own rule in the very first instance. Um, but I thought it was worth mentioning alongside the miniaturist because 
Um, it also talks a lot about um, ideas of femininity and in particular women and their relationship to artwork, especially anonymity. So next we have Natasha Pooley, who's also written two historical fiction novels, The Watchmaker of Filigree Street and The Bedlam Stacks. So The Watchmaker of Filigree Street was her first novel and it's set in 1880s Oxford and it's a brilliant steampunk adventure that revels in the kind of technological and mechanical inventions of that time period and it involves a lot of clockwork. It also has a brilliant female character in Grace Carroll, who's a theoretical physicist and sneaks into Oxford University Library dressed as a man so that she can research the luminiferous ether. It's an absolute gem of a book. So The Bedlam Stacks is set in 1859 and it follows the story of an English man who is sent to Peru on behalf of the India office to collect a rare cure for malaria. It blurs the lines between fantasy and reality and between mythology and history and it really interweaves the story of Peruvian um, superstition and their beliefs, their religious beliefs, um, throughout the book in a way that is slightly fantastical. It takes seriously the beliefs of Peruvian people about um, their cultural heritage and about their beliefs of stone markayuk, uh, which are sort of ancient stone figures that they believed could communicate with them and could move. And it also um, touches on issues of local language and also national identity. I thought it was a really beautiful book and although it doesn't contain many female characters, I don't think this is a bad thing at all. It would be anachronism if it did because of the kind of expedition that happens within the book. Women simply would not be allowed to go. And I don't think this makes it any less of a book. It's still a celebration to read a book like this because the author herself is clearly highly talented and accomplished. Hannah Kent is a new discovery for me and she has two books that I would like to recommend, Burial Rites and The Good People. So Burial Rites is set in 1829 in Iceland, uh, which was um, the year of the last public execution in that country um, where a woman is on trial for murder and in a similar way to Margaret Atwood's Alias Grace I think it's all about female guilt and also the quest to discover truth. It's a beautiful haunting story but I actually preferred her other novel The Good People which is set in 1820s Ireland in which a woman who has been recently widowed and whose daughter has also recently died is caring for her four-year-old grandson who's clearly very ill. The villagers seem plagued by bad luck and they turn to superstition to explain the events that are happening to them and specifically they begin to accuse this young child of being a changeling and I think it's a really tragic book um, but also a really interesting insight into how superstition can manifest itself within a community and the devastating impacts that it can have. Um, I thought it was a really stunning book, it was one of my favourites last year. Sarah Perry is my next choice, specifically her book The Essex Serpent, which I have made a separate video about because there was so much to talk about um, in this book. And it's set in 1890s London about a recently widowed woman who moves to Essex with her son, um, kind of in search of a mythological creature. It's really influenced by paleontology and archaeology of that time period and also the clashing between science and religion that was gaining momentum in that time is definitely influenced by On the Origin of Species by Charles Darwin. It's also really interested in womanhood and the societal expectations of women, especially those who've been widowed. Um, and the protagonist in this book, Cora, really struggles with her identity, um, the, the disparity between her weak physical body as a woman and her manly um, desire for knowledge. I think it's a really beautiful book, um, it's gorgeously written, it's written in kind of a slightly more archaic style than the other ones that I've been talking about, um, but it really is a thorough exploration of Victorian society. There are so many different layers and ideas and themes that it picks up on, and it does so in under 400 pages, which um, certainly can't be said of many Victorian novels that were written in that time period. So next on my list is Laura Purcell with her book The Silent Companions, which is a gothic novel set in 1860s London about yet another widowed woman who um, discovers some hidden secrets within her own home, particularly when she finds a painted wooden figure that looks exactly like her. 
it's extremely creepy, actually quite frightening at points, it really does suspense very well, um, but it has depth to it as well, it has interspersed chapters that are set in the 1630s which tell you more about the history of why these events are happening and it slowly unravels throughout the book. I think the less said about these types of books the better because inevitably I'll spoil some of the terrifying aspects of it if I talk too much but just believe me it's great and it has a really cool cover. Yag Yassi is one that I really wanted to mention in this video about her book Homegoing which was another favourite of mine from last year, it was just spectacular. It is an epic family historical novel that follows the stories of two girls born in Ghana in the 18th century, one of whom is uh, becomes a slave trader's wife and one of whom is sold into slavery. Each chapter progresses down a generation alternating between the two sisters and it spans not only generations and hundreds of years in time but also multiple continents. It's extremely ambitious as a novel. And of course as we progress through time we see the long-term effects of slavery and of racism right up until the modern period. It's an absolutely momentous achievement as a work of literature I think because it is so expansive um, and detailed but it's even more of an achievement because it's actually very readable. Um, it is extremely painful to read at times because it, it talks about some of the hardest subjects um, to discuss but it's not without lightness, it does have humour and it's extremely thought-provoking. It has a lot to say about how women have been treated throughout history, particularly black women, but I think it has even more to say about humanity as a whole. It is a beautiful novel. Lastly, I want to quickly mention an author whose debut book I've just made a separate video about, and it's The Mermaid and Mrs Hancock by Imogen Hermes Gower. It's about a man in 1785, London, who is a merchant and he has his ship sold unbeknownst to him in exchange for a mermaid. So he chooses to exhibit this mermaid which brings him money and notoriety and also the attention of a local brothel uh, which wants to exhibit uh, the mermaid with slightly more flair. The other protagonist is Angelica O'Neill, a courtesan who works in this brothel, who is simultaneously intelligent and naive, very independent but also craves the attention of men. It's a really sensitive portrayal of prostitution, high class prostitution at that time and w what it means to need independence as a woman um, and how this conflicts with the ideas of marriage and ownership. It's books like this one that are why I really love historical fiction because it gives these women a voice who would certainly not have one in books written in this time period and it respects them genuinely as people. I think this book says a lot about sexual power and what constitutes a woman which is a discourse that is just as valuable today as it was in the Georgian era. So those are all the authors that I wanted to mention in this video. It's by no means an exhaustive list, of course there are many many more amazing historical fiction female writers and there are some that I want to read more by like uh, Hilary Mantel and Toni Morrison and Sarah Waters um, which I plan to do so in 2018. So let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought or if you have any suggestions of other great female historical fiction writers. I'm always on the lookout for more suggestions. I hope you enjoyed this video anyway and I will see you soon. Bye bye.